What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be if you liked this book, then you'll like this book. It's like book recommendations based off of other books that I've read that feel similar or have similar vibes to other books that I've read. I have made one other video like this last year. I did, I guess you could call it part one, which I will link up here for you guys if you want to check it out. I think I have like 10 ideas on that one. And so I'm not doing any repeats. These are new similarities in books that I've seen. So you can go back, watch that one and then come back and watch this one. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, for the first option, I actually have, it's a three-parter. <laughs> I actually have two of these on here. If you've liked Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid, you might like The Midnight Library by Matt Haig, or you might like Una Out of Order by Margarita Montemore. So the reason that I say that these are very all similar is they're all like time travel alternate reality books. That is one of my favorite tropes and I will be having a whole book recommendations video out hopefully this summer because I've been reading a bunch of them and I'm putting them all together for you. But if you do like that concept, then I think that you would like all three of these if you haven't read any of them. Maybe in another life is where her life is like split in two on this one decision that she makes and you follow both of her lives in that direction. The Midnight Library is where this girl wants to commit suicide, but she gets kind of like transferred. It's a little bit more fantasy. She gets transferred to the, what is called the Midnight Library. And it's a library full of all of these lives that she could have or did have in her life. And if she finds one that she likes, she can pick that and that can be her new life. And so that one's very interesting as well because you're seeing like all of these things you could have been. Like maybe in one life, maybe she was an astronaut. In one life, maybe she was the president in the United States. It's very cool. And then in Una Out of Order, we read about Una who is traveling in her life, but it's out of order. So I think when she turns 19, it's like New Year's Day, but on that day of her birthday, every single year, she travels to a different year, but it's out of order. So maybe she went from 19 to like 45, and you know, obviously all of the trends are different, which is really cool to read about. But in all of these books, I really love the concept of what would you do if maybe you did split your life into two like which direction is the best one it kind of like they all kind of boil down to you never know that like your life is good if you're just living that life but that doesn't mean that other lives are going to be better i don't know if that makes sense but i really like all of the like underlying themes in all of these books and i just like thinking about that like you might not be happy in your life right now but that doesn't mean that a different life is going to make you happier okay next up we have if you liked behind her eyes by sarah pinborough you might like layla by colleen hoover and the reason i say that is because the ending of behind her eyes i can't really say it just because i still don't want to spoil it for those that haven't read it um but the themes in behind her eyes mimic a lot of kind of what layla is about so behind her eyes is a thriller and Layla is a paranormal romance. I do have a spoiler vlog for Layla. If you wanna know what it's about, I don't know, maybe you don't have any interest in reading it, um, but it was very original and mind blowing and you just really didn't see a lot of that coming just like in behind her eyes. But unfortunately, unless you've already read these books and you kind of know what I'm talking about, I can't really tell you the similarities of why I think that you would like them because it would give away a lot of the plot and a lot of just kind of what they are based about. So you just have to trust me on this one. You either need to go read them both, or if you've read one, you should go read the other. But they are similar in themes, I think, and I think that you would like one or the other if you did already read them. Okay, next up, if you've read Educated by Tara Westover, I think that you would like The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. Jeanette Walls, I think I said that right. So in both of these, these are both nonfiction memoirs. If you guys know I'm a huge fan of those. And in Educated, it is about like parents that are very like against all wor worldly things. Um, so they kind of, they, they don't believe in like sending their kids to school. They do all home education. They don't believe in doctors. Um, but then it kind of talks about like Tara, she decides then when she's an adult to kind of go and actually get an education. But it's her experience with growing up in something like that. And just like, not all of that was good. There definitely were cons to that. And in The Glass Castle, we read about Jeanette who 
also had parents that didn't really think the same as like a lot of people in the world and they kind of wanted like they were okay to be poor um, a lot of times the parents like used the money instead of feeding the children um, so they were kind of very similar with parents <laughs> that don't do what they're supposed to do when they're raising their kids and so both of those themes are very similar I think that if you liked one you will like the other one I definitely think that educated is my favorite like I rated educated five stars whereas the glass castle was only a four star to me but I think that's just because I've been reading a lot more memoirs and they do have a lot of similar themes so I'm just kind of getting a little used to the stories but I think even if you started with the glass castle you'll still love it and be like literally shocked at how these children were raised also I guess in both books like the children are going out and getting a better life for them compared to what the parents have provided. So that's also a similar theme. Next up, if you liked Slay by Brittany Morris, then you'll like Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. And the reason I say that is because they both are based off of like video games within these books. So Slay is about a black girl named Kira who at the age of, she's a teenager, I think 17 maybe, she created an online role-playing video game community of some sort. I'm not very versed in video games, so I don't know what the correct term of that is. This video game is specifically for black gamers, but unfortunately what happens is someone goes and murders somebody that was playing within the game, and so then a lot of controversial topics come up and racism, so it is a very good book, and I do think that young adults will really like it. In Ready Player One, it is, about this video game like where the world is kind of video games so it's kind of like virtual reality where yes you're sitting in your house but you like put on like goggles or whatever it is to go into this video game world and that's how you work get an education meet people like people in real life like in your home you don't like go out of your home you don't like go to work outside of your home. Like it's all within this video game. But there are underlying themes where there's like this competition and I don't know, it's actually pretty good. It's not like the movie. So if you've watched the movie, it is totally not the same. But in both of these, I think that you would like them if you like reading about video games and video game topics because they all, the, like they have a lot of video game lingo and just like things like that. So they seemed very similar to me when I was reading both of them and I think you would like one if you like the other. Next up, if you liked Know My Name by Chanel Miller, then you would probably like The Night Swim by Megan Golden. The reason that I say that is because both of these talk about rape culture. Know My Name is a nonfiction memoir, so that is a true story, whereas The Night Swim is a fiction book, so it is not based off of a true story, but it does show a lot of topics and real life instances of what it's like to be a female that ha is, has gone through that and, you know, just the injustices of it all, I should say. So I will just say that make sure that you, you know, have read trigger warnings and you're okay with reading any of these books on this subject. No, my name is very sad because of all that Chanel went through. Like that is true everything that she says and it is very disheartening like what rape victims have to go through in order for them to even get any justice it's, it's ridiculous like i can't even go through all of it but if you liked that or if you've read the night swim then i definitely suggest reading know my name i learned so much about rape culture in both of these books and so i am looking for more recommendations it can be non-fiction or it can be fiction so if you have any of those definitely drop them down below for me okay then we have if you've read the southern book club's guide to slaying vampires then you might like the wife of Stairs by Rachel Hawkins. Now, the reason that I say that is because within these books, like, yes, the storyline is different. I mean, they both are thrillers, or I guess technically the Southern Book Hope's Guide is like thriller horror. But the reason that I say that is they're like so Southern Gothic, like, you know, rich Southern wives, all this gossip, like has that dark Gothic feel to it. And that's something that I realized like, I like that in small doses, but I can only read that, I don't know, maybe like once a year. And so reading the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, I was like, wow, this is interesting. I've never kind of read a book like this before. And then reading Wife Upstairs, I was like, okay, I can totally see this being a theme. Not my favorite theme of all time, but I know that some people really, really like that. And so even though like the topics are different, I think that the vibe of these books are very much like the same. So if you liked one of them, I definitely think that you would like the other one. Next up we have, if you've read, well, 
Let's say if you've read 112263 by Stephen King, because that one's definitely the more popular of the book, you might like Replay by Ken Grimwood. So I know that if you've watched my channel, you probably already know this similarity because I've talked about it a lot, but with Replay, it's about this guy who keeps reliving his life over and over again, and it's right during 1963, so he's like trying to like make sure John F.K. doesn't get assassinated, and it has a lot of historical events in it, and I actually actually never finished the whole book of 112263, but the main part of it that I read and with the show that I watched and hearing everybody talk about it, it is very historical and that is like the main theme of that book. So when I was reading Replay, I was like, wow, this actually reminds me of 112263. Replay is a lot shorter. And of course it's not gonna be the exact same as 112263, but if you really liked that about 112263 and you wanted to read another book that kind of deals with like time traveling and you know going into different years and trying to prevent things because there's a lot of different prevention in replay then you should definitely pick it up and try it out okay next up if you liked or even disliked baby teeth by zoja stage i think that's how you say that then you will probably most definitely like the perfect child by lucinda berry so i did not like baby teeth because it is about this little kid that is very, very naughty. I was so annoyed by this child in this book, but it's kind of about where the like child is being mean to the mom and the dad doesn't believe the mom and all that kind of stuff. But with The Perfect Child, it is very similar, but it is just done so so much better. Like The Perfect Child was a 4.5 for me. And I think Lucinda Berry is writing a part two to it now, which is really cool. The Perfect Child definitely has the same themes where like the child is kind of naughty, but it wasn't as annoying. And it was a lot more believable, I thought, than Baby Teeth. I felt like Baby Teeth like was not realistic at all. And there wasn't a lot of other things going on, whereas The Perfect Child has like a better storyline to it. So I definitely think like if you liked Baby Teeth, then you probably would like The Perfect Child. If you didn't like Baby Teeth, then I definitely think you should give The Perfect Child a try. Okay. Last one, and this is a three-parter. If you liked Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas or On the Island by Tracy Garvis Graves, I think that you would like The Idea of You by Robin Lee. And the reason that I say that is because in all three of these books, we have an age gap romance. With Birthday Girl, the man is older and then the girl is younger. In On the Island, the girl is a little bit older than the guy. And in The Idea of You, it's actually a fairly older woman with a younger man. The Idea of You is actually all three of these books are like five star reads for me. I love them. I love the emotional romance that a lot of them have in them. The idea of you though, definitely takes the cake with like the amount of tears that I cried with it. So it was definitely a lot more emotional than the other two. The other two, specifically Birthday Girl is a little bit more smutty. Whereas the idea of you, I felt like it wasn't totally clean romance, but it definitely was a lot more storyline, emotional romance than it was smut. But it's about this, I think, 39 year old woman who is dating this 20 year old in a boy band. And so it talks about being famous and how people like view you and how they think that obviously they know everything that's best for you in your life. And you know, your life is kind of like out there for everyone to judge. I really enjoyed the themes in it. I really enjoyed the storyline. And I think I heard that Robin Lee is finally writing a part two. I'm so excited because this is one of my favorite books of last year and I really would like to read more of their story. Okay, that's it you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some book recommendations from it. If you like this kind of video, definitely give it a big thumbs up or leave a comment down below letting me know how much you enjoy these videos because I will definitely keep a list over this year in order to do a part three next year. But that's it, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys very soon in another video. Bye everyone.